Hey everyone, DJ's Aviation here. Welcome back to another video of mine, and this will probably be quite a lengthy video. I know a lot of you have been asking for these, so you'll probably enjoy this one. Today, I wanted to discuss is the A350 or 777X better for airlines? In this video, I will dive into what both aircraft are to provide some background information, the specifications of the two, including, for example, the cargo capacity of the two, and capacity as well as the order situation, and how many passengers it can hold, as well as the order situation, and a whole lot more. Through all the information provided, or previous information you might know, I'd love for you to leave your opinions in the comments section as I won't be voicing my particular opinion to avoid conflict. The overall answer then is simply up to you. I'll begin with a look at the Airbus A350. I've made a video on the A350-1000 so if you want to learn more about that variant specifically, I'll be putting a card on the top right of your screen now which you can watch if you want to learn more about it and then come back to this video. The A350 though is a long range twin engine wide body jet developed by Airbus. The A350 was introduced with Qatar Airways in 2015 and completed its first flight two years earlier in 2013. The A350 can be recognised to most by its raccoon-like cockpit windows, which are the first of its kind and are now featured on the A330neo and possibly future Airbus aircraft down the line. There are two variants of the A350 which is similar to the 777X with the Dash 900 and the Dash 1000. The A350-900 will set an airline back US $317.4 million as of 2018, and the longer Dash 1000 variant will set an airline back US $366.5 million, so around about a $50 million difference in total. However, it is known for airlines to get a substantial decrease on the list price, usually, uh, especially if it is part of a specific deal for a number of aircraft. On to the 777X. I've made a video solely about the 777X, discussing both the Dash 8X and the Dash 9 variants. A card will also appear on your screen now in the top right, so if you want to learn a little bit more about this variant, feel free to click that and then come back to this video. I won't be going super in depth with the 777X though, so that's why I was just suggesting if you want to go and see that and you're really interested in that, feel free to do so. The 777-8X is the shorter and stubbier version of the 777-X family, with the Dash 9 being the longer length. Uh, it's similar to the 777-200 and 777-300 for some current visual reference. A huge feature of the up-and-coming 777-X is the folding wingtips, which will adjust during flight and after flight to maximize its aerodynamic ability like the 787 does with its wing flex, and simply so it can fit into gates at airports, without that particular airport having to adjust the gates like what was needed to be done for the Airbus A380. The 777X is more expensive than the A350. The Dash 8 will set an airline back US $394.9 million, with the Dash 9 at US $425.8 million. So for this one, there's about a $30 million difference, but it is more expensive than the A350 as we mentioned. Now for a lot of people, the price isn't a brilliant way at comparing them, however, similar to everyday life, for me, it's important to analyze what you are paying for. For example, this could be used in booking hotels. One hotel may be more than the other one, but when you weigh it up and look at your other options, the more expensive hotel could be worth it, as the added money becomes worth it due to, let's say, its features over a cheaper hotel. This is almost the case with the A350 and 777X. As we go further into the video and compare more, we may see that the 777X's added price is warranted, or we might also just see that the A350 is far superior as it's even cheaper. Either way, the A350 and 777X will be perfect alternatives for different airlines if they prefer to go with Boeing or Airbus. This is only something I want to quickly touch on, but that is the order situation. While this doesn't necessarily determine which is best for airlines, it allows us to see if an aircraft has simply flopped or done well. It's also important to realize that when we compare these two figures, the 777X has not been released yet and is only in the early stages of being ordered. At this stage, the 777X has accumulated 326 orders, with 273 being for the Dash 9, which is the more popular version, and 53 for the Dash 8. Emirates are actually taking up a number of those orders and a couple of other airlines on top of that. It's actually interesting to take a look at the airlines that have ordered this 777X, as when you take a little more in-depth look of a screenshot that will be on your screen now, you can actually see that all of these airlines actually operate one of the older aircraft from the 777 family. 
It is also interesting to see the likes of Emirates, Qatar, and Etihad, the big three as we like to call them, placing their faith in the 777X's hands. This has also been the case with the 787 as well. The 777X orders began in 2013, so around five years ago, and that was also worth mentioning just because when I'll bring up the A350 orders, you'll actually notice that the A350 orders started a long time ago. So let's just say if the 777X came out at the same time as the A350, who knows, the orders may have been a bit different, but I think give it another five more years, and then you may see a shift in the amount of orders, but really it's just a waiting game. So the A350, this is an incredibly popular aircraft with around 850 orders, give or take a few on either side of that number. The airlines that have ordered this aircraft are certainly more diverse than the 777s. I would also say as the orders began in 2007, really it's had a fantastic amount of time to develop. In the A350's case, the Dash 900 has been the most popular with almost 700 orders. Now moving on to specifications, the more technical side of things, and this can be tricky to understand so I'm going to try and speak as slowly as possible so you can kind of take in everything I'm saying. I wanted in this section to briefly talk about the range of the aircrafts and how that would benefit various airlines with their requirements. This can be a factor without a doubt when it comes to picking an aircraft. For example, Qantas have stated they want a long haul aircraft that can do Sydney to London non-stop. Obviously, this makes it evident they would prefer to opt for an aircraft probably based on range over capacity. The A350-900 has a range of 15,000 kilometers, with the Dash 1000 having a range of 14,750 kilometers. Overall, this really isn't a huge difference compared to when we have a look at, let's say, the 777X range in a second. The 777-A8 has a range of 16,100 kilometers, with the Dash 9 having one of around 14,000. So the Dash 8 to me can come across certainly as a possible more attractive option if an airline is going for range over capacity. Despite the Dash 8's capacity, it still has around 50 more seats than the A350-900. Again, this backs up my statement earlier when I was talking about how you need to have a look and analyse why a particular aircraft is more expensive than the other. As we have progressed in this video, you may have become aware that there are quite a lot of differences. Um, they're not identical, but you'll start seeing that the 777X will fit more people and so on. And that doesn't necessarily make it better because, as I said, it's really down to the airline and what they prefer. Some airlines might just like the simplicity of the A350 and don't need those extra 50 seats, whereas some might. A factor I haven't looked into in previous comparison videos is the maximum takeoff weight and cargo capacity. Uh, to me, I find this rather interesting, especially as these days for airlines, cargo can be extremely important. For instance, Etihad Airways removed their A380 flight and swapped it with the 777, not solely because of capacity. It was actually due to the amount of cargo that can fit on the A380, and this is actually less than the 777, which is really why Etihad switched. So while it may seem like this factor flies under the radar, it is certainly an interesting one to take a look at. The A350 can typically hold 280 tonnes of weight when it comes to the takeoff, 316 tonnes if you were to use the 1000 version, whereas the 777X can hold on both variants 351 tonnes of takeoff weight, making the price tag now make even more sense. Continuing on, let's take a look at the cargo capacity of the aircraft. The A350 can fit 11 pallets or 14 on the longer version. Whereas we don't necessarily have a number in pallets on the 777X, but we know it can hold around 230.2 meters squared of pallets. Now, I don't know how many it would fit. Uh, maybe if a viewer works with this sort of thing, they might be able to explain it to me, but honestly, I'm not too sure. Seriously, this video could go on for a very long time, and I feel I've been going over this long enough. I'm pretty sure the video is going to be over 10 minutes, which is quite a shock to me, as I don't know the last time I had a video over 10 minutes. I'd love to leave this one up to you. Which do you think is best for airlines, the A350 or the 777X? It'd be great to hear all what you think. And just as a quick reminder, although it's tricky, we should all try to respect one another's opinions, especially as this particular video could spark that classic Boeing versus Airbus conversation and or debate. This is something I try to avoid in the comments because I just don't want to see conflict unfold. Either way, thank you all very much for watching another one of my videos. Feel free to subscribe if you're new and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. If you have more videos like these that you want to see, feel free to also drop them in the comment section. I'll see you all in my next one. Peace. Oh, well,